one second. Um, uh, the high road, we'll call it. Um, let's be abundantly clear that I have been uh, as guilty as anybody as getting into like Twitter dust ups and flame wars back in the day over stuff, and it it becomes uh, difficult to you know to kind of keep your powder dry in these circumstances um, where you know, someone is being a belligerent a-hole and is being, like, cruel or or willfully ignorant. It's very frustrating. But after a certain point, you recognize that if you maintain your dignity in how you speak to someone, and, and this does not mean that you have to, you know, you, you lose wit or you can't be sharp or biting in your commentary or whatever, but you don't lose your mind and you don't start screaming and you keep it within the bounds of behavior because after a certain point... Even if they're unwinnable, you're not talking to them. You're talking to the people behind and around them, the people that they view as supporters, who, um, no matter what they do, will not be as fervently a believer in the weird ideology of the person you're arguing with as that person is. And and by doing that, by by speaking um, on on a higher level in that circumstance, by being wittier. By being, by keeping control of your emotions and your idea, uh, your ideas, by being having enough detail uh, to back up what you're saying, to you know, by doing that, you may not win that person, but you will break into the 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 wall that they have built up, uh, that the other people are uh, around them uh, support them for. You will their their support structure will start to crumble because you'll put the seed of doubt in people. Um, who are hanging around this person, you know, and, um, yeah, I just use facts. I agree. There, um, but just holding some sort of patience being, you know, n not getting into the, you're just stupid name call part of it. Um, and I'll call somebody stupid or a dummy, but it's oftentimes, if you'll notice, it's someone with elected office or someone who is, has power over other people. So I will diminish them, you know, and bring them down uh, to my argumentative level as a joke. But it is only after I have made a case or whatever. Like, I'm I'm pretty choosy about how I do it. The, the rare exception being Julian Assange, who uh, I have no problem calling a rapist. And uh, I will pretty much, you know, end that as like an email signature on most of the con conversations I have around that person. Um, but... But at a certain point, by putting that in, by going, you know, but, you know, that caveat, I am, I, you know, morally, this is what's wrong with what you're saying. Factually, this is what's wrong with what you're saying. But then again, I am talking to a rapist. Um, there is something to saying that. Um, and he won't hear it. There's no way Julian Assange, Julian Assange thinks his rape charges are part of a, a neo-feminist conspiracy um, with the Bush administration, like and the deep state. Um, he's taken no responsibility for his part in that, and he actually thinks it's you know it, it's despicable. But I guarantee there are some people at WikiLeaks who have a problem. They, if you watch the documentary about them, if you watch Snowden, if you watch any of the movies around them, there's definitely a lot of people at WikiLeaks who are uh, who feel like Snow, uh, that uh, Assange does more damage to the organization uh, than than he benefits them. And the guy's a pig, um, and I and he definitely tried to put his thumb on the scale of the American election. There's no. Uh, I haven't seen any uh, Hillary or or specifically any Bernie DMs that have come through um, in terms of, uh, you know, him trying to reach out to them to fight the deep state. He didn't contact, you know, and I'm curious if, if there are any, uh, you know, him reaching out to the Bernie campaign, which would make more sense. If you'd have found out that WikiLeaks had reached out through DMs to the, the Bernie Sanders campaign, that would be sort of logical, but they didn't. They reached out to Trump and they wanted to, you know, he wanted a role in the Trump administration. He wanted, you know, protections and benefits, a quid pro quo in this. So, um, so the point being is that there's no reaching Julian Assange. There's no reaching the guy that I just called or whatever. But at a certain point, if you can maintain your, uh, your cool and, and, and your a little bit of joie de vie, you can, uh, you will reach the people behind and beyond them. That has to be the goal. So um, taking, you know, and again, the high road isn't just being kind of, you know, kind of taking their argument and trying to just maintain a, uh, 
you know, it, sort of a Mike Pence level of like, well, that's just all right, you know, kind of, that's just not nice, you know, kind of attitude. That's not what I'm talking about. But you'd never lose control of your your argumentative self in those circumstances. And by doing that, you you gain the respect of the people who 